a caravan of shadows, moving silently across continents. No flags, no empires, no written chronicles, and yet an entire people scattered across Europe bearing traces of a forgotten origin. Who are the Romani? Where did they come from? Their music echoes through the alleys of Andalusia. Their language whispers Sanskrit in Slavic towns. And their faces reflect centuries of displacement, resilience, and myth. For centuries, Europe saw them as nomads, strangers, outsiders. But what if their story began not with wandering, but with exile? Ancient manuscripts mention mysterious travelers from the East. DNA strands found in bones buried deep under European soil point to something unexpected. A massive, silent migration, hidden from history books. How did they cross the vast lands between the Indian subcontinent and the heart of Europe without leaving a trace? Tonight, we'll follow the genetic breadcrumbs, decode lost dialects, and uncover the invisible journey of a people erased from the maps, but not from memory. What forced the Romani to leave India? And how did they end up scattered across the entire European continent? This is not folklore. This is science. This is the untold story of the Romani migration from India to Europe. For centuries, the history of Europe has been told through the lens of kings, empires, wars, and borders. But beneath the surface of recorded events lies a deeper current, one of forgotten migrations and unrecognized civilizations. Among these silent movements, the journey of the Romani people stands out as one of the most overlooked human odysseys in history. It is estimated that over 10 million Romani people live across Europe today from Romania to Spain, from Hungary to the UK. Yet their collective past remains shrouded in mystery. European records first mention them in the 14th century, labeling them as Egyptians, Saracens, or simply Gypsies, a misnomer that followed them for generations. But long before they were seen roaming European roads in colorful caravans, their routes stretched thousands of kilometers eastward to the Indian subcontinent. The question is, when and why did they leave? Archaeological traces are scarce. Their early history is not carved in stone or sealed in royal archives. Instead, it lives in their blood, their language, their oral traditions. Linguists noticed strange similarities between the Romani tongue and ancient Indian languages like Hindi and Punjabi. Geneticists detected unmistakable South Asian markers in Romani DNA. But without written records, the story has remained fragmented, a puzzle missing too many pieces. Yet, piece by piece, a timeline is emerging. Around the year 1000 AD, something happened. A mass departure, a forced migration, or perhaps a desperate escape. Could war conquest or slavery have driven an entire population from India toward the unknown West? The scale is staggering. Thousands of people on foot, moving over mountains, through deserts, across hostile lands, for generations. And somehow, they survived. Not only survived, they adapted, transformed, and preserved a cultural identity that defied assimilation. But why did history erase their trail? And what secrets still lie buried between India and Europe, waiting to be uncovered? The breakthrough didn't come from a battlefield or an ancient manuscript, but from a grave. In a quiet cemetery on the outskirts of a Bulgarian village, archaeologists uncovered human remains dating back to the early 13th century. Among the bones was something unusual a strand of mitochondrial DNA that didn't match the genetic patterns common in medieval Europe. It wasn't Middle Eastern. It wasn't North African. It was distinctly South Asian. At first, researchers thought it might be a fluke, a merchant's child, perhaps, or the offspring of a rare traveler. 
But then more graves emerged in Romania, in Hungary, in the Czech Republic. The same genetic marker appeared again and again, echoing a single origin, northern India. Around the same time, linguists began noticing something strange. In the Romani language, still spoken in pockets across Europe, there were clear fingerprints of Sanskrit and Prakrit, ancient Indian tongues long extinct in daily life. Words for everyday items, body parts, numbers, and family structures showed a clear Indo-Aryan root. Even the grammar mirrored patterns used in the Indian subcontinent over a thousand years ago. But how could a language survive a journey of such magnitude? The answer lay in the structure of Romani culture. Oral, mobile, and deeply familial. As generations moved westward, they carried not scrolls or stone tablets, but songs, idioms, and stories, all encoded in a living language that defied time. This was more than coincidence. This was the first solid thread, genetic and linguistic, tying the Romani people to India. And the implications were enormous. If these graves and words mark the beginning of the trail, then somewhere between India and Eastern Europe lay the missing chapters of an epic migration, one erased by history, but etched into bone and language. The silent journey had left traces. And now, the search would begin in earnest. Once the genetic and linguistic clues aligned, an interdisciplinary coalition was formed. A rare alliance of geneticists, historical linguists, anthropologists, and archaeologists. Their goal? Trace the invisible path the Romani people had taken from India to Europe a thousand years ago. But the challenge was monumental. No centralized records. No monuments. Just scattered fragments of culture and blood. The team turned to the one map that never lies, the human genome. Using advanced mitochondrial DNA mapping, they began comparing modern Romani populations with various ethnic groups across the Indian subcontinent. The genetic link became undeniable. The closest matches were found among the Doma and other marginalized communities in northwestern India, regions historically tied to artisans, musicians, and ironworkers. These weren't just occupational coincidences, they were cultural echoes. Parallel to this, linguistic sleuths tracked the evolution of the Romani language like detectives following a dialectal breadcrumb trail. As Romani evolved across Europe, it absorbed loanwords from Persian, Armenian, Greek, and Slavic languages, perfectly mirroring the ancient trade routes and migration corridors from India through Persia, the Byzantine Empire, and into Eastern Europe. Each borrowed word marked a waypoint, each grammatical shift a new chapter. Yet the heart of the language remained unmistakably Indian, frozen in time. Meanwhile, anthropologists analyzed Romani folklore, rituals, and oral traditions, comparing them with Indian customs. Wedding ceremonies, musical scales, even the use of fire in purification rites pointed to an unbroken cultural lineage stretching back a millennium. But every discovery brought more questions. Why would an entire ethnic group leave India around the 10th or 11th century? And how did they survive, largely undocumented, through some of the most violent and unstable centuries in Eurasian history? The team faced gaps, conflicting narratives, and political tension. But they pressed on. Piece by piece, they were reconstructing not just a migration, but a legacy. A story stolen by time, now being recovered by science. The breakthrough came not from Europe, but from deep within India. A team of geneticists at the Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology in Hyderabad conducted a full-spectrum analysis on isolated tribal groups from Rajasthan and Punjab. What they discovered was astonishing. The Y-chromosome haplogroups of certain subgroups showed an almost perfect genetic alignment with multiple Romani populations in Eastern Europe. 
This wasn't partial overlap. This was direct lineage. The data pointed to a mass population split occurring around the 10th century, precisely the time historians suspected a major migration westward. But the surprise didn't end there. When this data was cross-referenced with ancient climate records and political histories, a possible cause emerged. The Ghaznavid invasions. In the early 11th century, Mahmud of Ghazni launched repeated raids into northern India, devastating cities, enslaving artisans, and destabilizing kingdoms. Entire communities were uprooted. Some were taken as captives. Others fled. The evidence suggests that the ancestors of the Romani may have been among those displaced, skilled laborers, performers, and tradespeople forced to leave their homelands in the face of violence and conquest. Once taken westward as prisoners or refugees, they began a slow, fragmented migration through Persia, Armenia, and into the Byzantine territories. Genetic traces in those regions, some from cemeteries, others from present-day populations, aligned perfectly with the Romani genomic sequence. To verify this timeline, researchers applied radiocarbon dating to bone samples from ancient Romani graves, then layered those findings with linguistic timestamps, dating when Persian or Greek words were adopted into the Romani language. The results were astonishingly consistent. Science was no longer just supporting the theory. It was confirming it. This was not myth, not legend. It was a historical fact, hidden in flesh, preserved in grammar, and resurrected by data. For the first time, we could see the Romani not as eternal wanderers, but as exiles with a point of origin, a reason for flight, and a timeline of dispersion. Their forgotten history was no longer a mystery. It was a map. Imagine the scene. Northern India, around the year 1000 AD. Villages burned, temples looted, and communities shattered by wave after wave of Ghaznavid raids. Among the chaos, a group of families, artisans, musicians, smiths, dancers, gather their belongings, not to return, to escape. Their exodus is not a march of conquest, but of survival. On foot, on carts, they begin a journey that will take generations. Through the scorched lands of present-day Pakistan and Afghanistan, they move west, clinging to stories, songs, and each other. Some are captured and sold into slavery in Persian markets. Others offer their skills in exchange for protection, forging iron, playing music, telling fortunes. Slowly, they push onward. In Persia, they absorb words. In Armenia, they adopt customs. In the Byzantine Empire, they learn to navigate new religious and political landscapes. They are never fully accepted. Always the others. Always watched. Yet, remarkably, their identity holds. The core of their language remains Indian. Their family structures remain intact. Oral tradition becomes their shield against cultural erosion. By the 13th century, they appear in the Balkans, already changed, yet unmistakably linked to their roots. Local chroniclers note their darker skin, unfamiliar dialects, and strange instruments. They're labeled Egyptians a misinterpretation that sticks for centuries. But they are not Egyptian. They are the living echo of an Indian diaspora, walking silently across a continent. As they move deeper into Europe, Hungary, Slovakia, Poland, persecution intensifies. Laws are passed, settlements are raided, yet they endure. Their music, like a coded message, spreads across borders, Flamenco in Spain, Lautare melodies in Romania, fiddle tunes in Ireland. Every note carries the weight of a thousand years. Each rhythm is a memory. They are no longer just travelers. They are carriers of history, culture, pain, and brilliance. A civilization in motion.
The Romani migration is not just a forgotten footnote in history. It is a mirror held up to the very way we write and preserve our past. For centuries, their story was erased not because it lacked importance, but because it was inconvenient. No written scrolls, no empires built, no wars won in their name. And yet, their legacy outlasted kings. It lived in their resilience, encoded in their DNA, whispered through their songs, and carried across borders on the soles of their feet. From the deserts of Rajasthan to the cobblestone streets of Seville, from the forests of Transylvania to the alleyways of Paris, the Romani people walked a thousand-year journey, uninvited, undocumented, and unstoppable. What we now understand through genetic science, linguistic archaeology, and historical reconstruction is this. The Romani are not wanderers without roots. They are the children of a forgotten exodus, a mass displacement triggered by violence, sustained by culture, and silenced by prejudice. But science has given them back their origin. It has connected dots that empires tried to scatter. It has made visible the invisible path carved across continents by a people history tried to ignore. And yet, their struggle continues. Even today, many Romani communities face discrimination, poverty, and cultural erasure. But understanding their past is the first step to honoring their future. By reclaiming their story, we challenge the very framework of historical memory. We ask, whose stories get told, and whose get buried. The Romani journey reminds us that history is not only what is written, but what survives in blood, in language, and in rhythm. If you found this journey as powerful as we did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Dive deeper into the hidden chapters of human history with us and discover the truths that textbooks forgot. This was the untold story of the Romani migration from India to Europe. The past is speaking. Are we finally ready to listen?